Yo, what's going on Epic7? I'm Sue and this is my beginner's guide to Banshee. As I'm recording this in 2024, you could argue that Banshee is the best hunt in all of Epic7. Sure, Wyvern has the speed set, which many, myself included, consider to be the best set in the entire game, but it just has that along with two just alright sets. Banshee comes with not one, not two, but four really good sets that you could farm, meaning it might have the best bang per buck in the entire game. It comes with the counter set and the destruction set, two sets that are considered staples amongst the game's best tanks and bruisers, along with the resist set, which is invaluable on your soul weavers, and lifesteal, which is paramount for certain damage dealers in this game. Banshee is the hunt with the lowest amount of HP in Epic 7, making it super easy to farm in the late game once you have good equipment. But as a new player that doesn't really have a ton of gear, you could argue it's actually the hardest hunt right up there with Katie's. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to tackle the Banshee as a new player using a fully free-to-play team along with gear that you can get from the 6th Anniversary event or the game's adventurous path if you're watching this after the 6th Anniversary event has ended. Before we take a look at the actual team, let's talk about three things that I think every team needs in order to succeed as a brand new Banshee team. Number one, a defense break to help speed up the fight. Because without it, you're going to be taking 5 to 10 minutes per clear, as opposed to 2 to 3 with a defense breaker on your team. Number 2, and most importantly, an AoE damage dealer to deal with the first stage in order to again speed up the fight, as well as deal with the extra adds that spawn throughout this encounter. And finally, number 3, a cleanser, as the Banshee uses a lot of debuffs, some of which can be potentially backbreaking, specifically that Banshee's curse. Ideally, you're going to want to have a team that has all three of these things, and... As a bonus, if you could have it be entirely mono green to help minimize the Banshee's healing, that would be pretty good. If you don't know, the Banshee heals every time it hits somebody that is not a green character, so that's going to slow down your clear time just a little bit longer. Sadly, using only units that every player is guaranteed to have on their account, that's not really possible, right? Only Clurry and Vivian from my team are guaranteed to all players, so I had to make do with some other flex slot options. But don't worry, I'll make some other recommendations when I talk about them in case you have them on your account to make things that much easier. Let's start by talking about Falconer Clurry. Falconer Clurry is unlocked through her specialty change and you get a free copy of Clurry, the base form of her, when you complete episode one of the story and finally unlock the specialty change feature. As for how we level her, Level 50, 5 star Woken is just fine on the character, but ideally level 60, 6 star Woken would be really nice. For skill levels, try to get as much as you can here in the S2 Magic Resist for the kind of extra healing for your team. It'll be really, really beneficial for you. And then max out Flurry Attack because, well, we need it to be available as early as possible, as often as possible, and we want that max debuff chance. As for her skill tree, Try to get as much as you possibly can, especially the ones that are here on Flurry Attack, as well as Healing. These are super, super good for your team and will help speed up the fight tremendously. As for how we build her, pretty simple. Speed set is ideal, but any set that you can use is fine. Boots we want speed as the main stat. Ring, we want health percentage or effectiveness. And then the necklace, we want health percentage. We want to get at least 65% effectiveness, so that, that way we can very consistently defense break the Banshee. As for the artifact choice, Arius is the no-brainer option for any tank in Epic 7. If you don't have it, use another 4-star like Adamant Shield or any other Knight Artifact will work fine until you actually unlock Arius. Next up is our AoE damage dealer in Vivian. You can obtain Vivian by going to your mailbox, ongoing events, and scrolling down to the Haunt Expert Challenge, choosing the Banshee Challenge, and just simply completing the quest, you'll get a copy of Vivian along with six Daydream Jokers. It's just that simple. Having a team that can clear episode one on auto should be enough for you to clear the lower stages of Banshee before it gets too difficult, making it trivially easy to unlock Vivian. Since Vivian is our primary damage dealer, I highly recommend level 66 star Woken. It will give you the most amount of attack, the most amount of HP, allowing her to survive and dish out big damage. As for skill levels, you don't necessarily need Mana amplification here at plus one because obviously I'm doing it without it, but it is definitely recommended. After that, Thunder God's Cry as high as you could possibly get it. I know that you might be catalyst starved as a new player. I know I personally am. And then anything you can get in Vitality Drain, that's great. Basically, try to get this character as maxed out as possible. Plus 15 would be super nice, but is not necessary. 
As for how to build her, absolutely use Daydream Joker on her. It's the best PvE damage artifact most of the time in the game. It's even better than some of the five stars in the game. And you get six copies for free with Vivian, so no reason not to use it. As for the actual sets and gear, I am using a speed set, which is comprised of dash gear, some free conquest points gear, and then obviously the free world championship ring that you can get at rank 60. But if you don't have that, just use the destruction set and either the critical hit chance set or the penetration set that all comes for free with the dash pass event. If you're watching this and the dash pass event is no longer available, just use the free critical hit chance sets and attack sets that the game gives you for free from the adventurer's path. Ideally, boots would be main stat, attack percentage on your ring, and your necklace should be critical hit damage. Now let's talk about the other two characters that should be on your team. First up is the healer. I'm going to choose Angelic Montmorency because she's a three star. She's pretty good and there's a good chance you probably already have her built for something like say Wyvern 13. If you have Angelica instead from your Wyvern 13 team, feel free to slap her down here. Will work absolutely fine. Destina is another great option for you if you have that character available. So you could also use even somebody like I'd say Bernard would also be pretty good if you're playing an entirely modern green team. That is another three-star option. You have plenty of options to choose from. Just make sure that the character can heal and has some form of cleanse available to them. As for how to build the character, level 50, five-star Awoken is fine. And since it's a three-star for Montmorency, just get whatever you can on the skill levels to help boost her healing. And same thing here with your skill tree. As much as you could possibly get will make things a lot smoother. If you are using a five star like Destina, try to get things like regen or Destina's grace as level up as possible to maximize that healing. Things like that. As for how to actually build the character, you can basically play almost anything that you want. Uh, any effect resistance would be super helpful to keep debuffs off of your cleanser, but is not super necessary. You could play six pieces of the health kind of set that you get here for free from the adventurous path that'll work fine with the exception of one thing you want your boots to be speed main stat not health percentage we need our cleanser to actually take turns somewhat quickly that's another reason why the recommended artifact is going to be magaraha's tome for angelic montmorency to help her cycle if you can get your speed over 200 on your cleanser you don't really need magaraha's tome instead just use whatever soul weaver artifact you want for the ring, I'm using effect resistance, but you could also use health percentage. And then you could use health percentage here as the main stat on the necklace. Finally, we come to our final flex slot. You can play a lot of different things in this slot. You could potentially play another healer if you're dying and you don't mind slower uh, clears. You could play a lot of different damage dealers as well. Things like Vildred would be all right in this slot. Immortal Wukong would be pretty good in this slot. Bologna would be good in this slot. Charles is decent in this slot. There's a number of green damage zones that you can put in this slot. The main reason I chose Free Spirit Tiaria is because one, I know everyone has access to her. Number two, she has an AOE attack in Energy Wave, which helps Vivian do her job a bit more efficiently. And Pursuit Cut here is basically a uh, defense break here. Also helps speed up the fight. Uh, also, you just get the character at plus 15 investment, so everybody is just going to have access to a pretty strong one, or at least a reasonably strong one from the start. Uh, level 50 is probably fine, but if you really are gung-ho about trying to get it done quicker and just don't have any of their alternatives that we talked about, level 60 should also work out just fine. But I think level 50 should be fine for most players. Daydream Joker as the artifact is going to be the best option again because, well, it's just the best PvE damage artifact you can use. Same thing, similar story for how we build the character. Speed is our main stat for boots. Attack percentage for our ring main stat. Critical hit damage for our necklace main stat. Just feel free to use whatever gear you have laying around that you got from either the 6th anniversary event or the game's actual adventurous path. Now that you understand what we're playing, why we're playing it, how to build it, let's jump into an actual run and I'll explain how the fight pans out. So our first encounter for Banshee is going to be these three ads that spawn. It should be fairly easy if you have Vivian and another strong DPS. Basically, no more than two turns should be taken by each character. It should be pretty trivial to kind of burst everything down here. So now we come to the Banshee itself. As you can see from Vivian's damage, it doesn't have a ton of HP, but it does have that built-in healing, again, when it hits non-green units, so... 
that can make things a little bit troublesome. As you can see here, there's that Banshee's Curse we talked about at the beginning of the video. If we don't cleanse that, our team is going to take a lot of AoE damage. This is why we need a cleanser on our team. And luckily, Montmorency is just the right person for the job here. Alright, now that we have the Banshee at 70%, she'll heal up a bit and then disappear. And it will spawn four copies of Misty Chain. This is why we need the AoE damage dealers. On higher tiers of Banshee, every time you kill one of these Misty Chains, the other remaining Misty Chains immediately get their turn. By having an AoE damage dealer that could easily take all of them out in one fell swoop, we avoid that and don't take any unnecessary damage. Now all that's left after the adds are defeated is to get rid of the Banshee herself. She has one more major trick up her sleeve at around 40% remaining HP, where she'll use a ton of poison stacks on your team. As long as your cleanser is up to the task, shouldn't be too difficult. If you are having issues though, I recommend swapping out your second damage dealer for another healer or a cleanser. I would rather you have a consistent run that clears about 80% of the time, as opposed to something that's only going to clear 30 or 40% of the time. And now you can see here at 40%, there's that big debuff. You can see it's a lot of poison stacks coming out. And you're going to start to see the threat of the Banshee's Curse coming back out here in a second. Alright, now you can see Banshee's Curse is on Vivian. And if we don't cleanse that, we're going to take a ton of damage to our entire team. This is why a cleanser is so important. So we don't cleanse it there and we still took a ton of damage. And there you go. Very first Banshee team in the books. If I missed anything or you have any more questions, feel free to let me know down in the comment section below. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.